Hey guys, thanks for joining me. This video is not going to be the hunky-dory, I love it, I love it, I love it type video because it's just, it's made up of all the products that really haven't been working for me lately. And when you try as many things as I do, you definitely run into some stuff that just didn't quite hit the mark. And some of it may be just things that I personally didn't like and may work for someone else. Um, some of them might just be kind of an odd formula or just the way the product was put together. I didn't really enjoy it. But I do think it's just as important to share these things with you as it is, you know, the stuff that worked awesome. So I've got a small basket of things here. It's kind of overflowing. I'm always one that does that. I get like a small container and then I mound it up with something. First thing I will mention is this palette from Sonia Kashuk and it's called Eye on Textured Nudes and I hadn't heard a dang thing about this and then one day I was in Target and I saw like the regular matte nude palette that they have, um, the shimmery one, and then this. I was like, oh, something new. Here we've got a row of mattes a row of kind of pearly um, shimmery finishes and then these are straight up glitters and one problem I have is with a palette this large there's not a lot of contrast with it I will say that like this shade and this shade kind of come off a little bit deeper than they even appear to be in the palette. And I mean, as far as these two rows go, I like what's going on here. I would have preferred to have, you know, a couple of deeper colors in the mix. But as far as the quality of the mattes and then these kind of metallic shimmery ones go, they're really nice. My issue with this is that one third of the palette, this whole row here, is just kind of a loose glitter type of finish, and they all end up looking the same. They're all fairly light. I mean, you could use any one of these and get the same look on your eyes, whether it was the one at the bottom or the one at the top. It's the kind of finish that gives that wet look because there's very little actual shadow pigment happening. It's just straight up sparkle in there. So, I mean, if they wanted to throw in one or even two shadows like that, I don't think I'd be too upset about it, but to have just this whole section of the palette made up of something where the shadows all exactly the same. I'm kind of disappointed because I really love, you know, other Sonia Kashuk shadow products that I have, but this one I just didn't quite understand. So I think about a month, month and a half ago I had a night where I just could not get to sleep and Belle was snoring. Belle was not snoring. Tyler was the one snoring. Belle at the time had come down with something. I would just kind of worry about her and up and I was on my iPad and guess what? I may have stumbled into a little online shopping on maccosmetics.com because I had gotten an email that said free next day shipping and I, I don't know, the thought of that just really appealed to me at the time. So um, I got a few things. I got a few lipsticks that I really like, different lip products, and I also went out on a limb and decided to try a foundation that I just never really hear talked about. Now I'm kind of understanding why it's the full coverage foundation. This is a cream foundation. I have it, I'm holding it here in the shade NC30, and it's really, really thick to the touch. I found it a little tricky just like with my beauty blender to even pick up a lot of product off of there, so I ended up I think using a brush to kind of swipe it all over my face and a beauty blender to blend it in. I don't feel like I achieved the fullest coverage with this first off. I think I can get good coverage but it's not necessarily as good as some other liquids that I have but my primary gripe with this is the staying power. Has anybody else used this and had like great luck with it looking fresh for a long time? This is the kind of thing I wonder if it was maybe designed for like on-air TV type circumstances where you want your makeup to look nice for a couple hours hours and then, you know, all hell breaks loose. Because on me, and I'm not terribly oily, I'm pretty much normal, maybe a little bit combo in the T-zone, and this stayed looking pretty darn fresh, like I really liked the finish for a couple hours, and then it just like completely broke down. It was like every part of this foundation said, yep, we're out. It truly looked like it had disappeared from the center of my face, and also like down into this area too, onto my cheeks, which is never usually a big problem area. So this product, probably the least workable MAC foundation for me that I have tried. I tried something from Makeup Revolution called the Ultra Strobe Balm. It's in the shade Euphoria. I think this might be the only shade it comes in. To look at it from a distance, it just kind of looks like a white cream. To look at it close up, can you see that there's kind of an opal type thing going on there? And I kind of like the texture of the product because it's not too sticky, but yet it's still easy enough to pick up. But my issue is when you swatch it out, you can totally tell. And when you put it on your cheeks, it's just like straight up baby pink. I don't get sort of that subtle, oh, it might have a little pinky glow when it catches a light type sheen. It's just like 
pink. It's so much more pink than you would expect it to be in this compact. And the issue may just be my skin tone, but when I apply this in places where I want to highlight, it just looks like misplaced blush on me. Maybe deeper skin tones could get away with that and benefit from this shade a little more, but on me it just looked like you know, why is that there? <laughs> While I'm talking about failed highlights, let's bring in some e.l.f., shall we? These are the Baked Highlighter and Bronzer and the Baked Highlighter and Blush. This says Bronzed Glow and this says Rose Glow on this one. So they've put their baked products into duos. I've never been a huge fan of their baked blushes or really baked anything that looks like this kind of deal, but I thought, okay, they're putting two in one. Maybe they've changed the formula somewhat. And I just find these to be weak. Weak, 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 elf. I'm sorry. They just don't really show. For whatever reason, the highlight on the bronzer side is a little bit better than the highlight on the blush side, but the blush and bronzer themselves, like, barely show up. I mean, I did not sign up for barely there. And I appreciate the effort to make it convenient and do a little two-in-one, but just not working for me. While on the topic of e.l.f., they've got some of these new duo stick type things, and they've got them. It's kind of like their take on nude sticks, because they've got little tins that they sell as well, little sharpeners, and I've got several for lips, and those seem to work fine. I also got the one for contour, and contour and highlight, basically. So one end is your contour colored stick, and it's actually a decent shade for me. It was kind of soft. It was way easier sorry about the phone, it was way easier to blend out than I would have expected for being something so small that you're swiping over your skin. I could just like buff it out with my finger. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is going well, very good. And then there's a shimmer side. And this is just like straight up gold. I mean, let me swatch this for you. And this is so hard to blend. I mean, after immediately swiping it on my skin, I could not blend it out whatsoever. It's right there. Like, what? Why can't this side just be a creamy pencil, like hint of shimmer, something easy to blend out, something in the consistency of what's happening on this contour side? That would be great. Has anyone tried these e.l.f. lock-on gel liner pencils? They're actually really smooth. They've got a nice capping system, I will say that. They really have a tight cap, and the shades that I have, you know, they felt soft to begin with, and they still feel soft. Uh, but this nude shade, which I was hoping would be an ideal, like, lower inner rim type color. I have never had this experience before. This this wears a long time because I was looking at this, I was trying it again yesterday. I looked at it after maybe eight hours of wear and it was still in my waterline, but it looked so odd. It looked a little too dark first off, so it really showed like as being makeup-y, not just as, hey, look at my super fresh, you know, lower inner rim. <laughs> Here's the thing, lower inner rim, when you're going nude, when you've decided, I just want that to be kind of colorless, I want to undo the discoloration, that's like all you want to do. You don't want to be like attracted to really look at that area. You just want it to be nice and clean. This is this shade swatched out right here. It's a little dark, like the shade is off, but it looked so dry, which is a really weird thing to be saying about the waterline because normally it's like that's the area where stuff just wears off because it is so wet. And generally dryness is like the last issue I would have there, but it looked like patchy, dry, like foundation or something. It was weird and I didn't like it. And it made me look at my eye with the false lashes, the smoky eye shadow, this, that, and the other thing, and the only thing I could see was that weird ass waterline. What? I'm getting too heated over this video. And this is the kind of thing where somebody will say in the comments, you didn't seem like you were in a very good mood. Well, I'm talking about stuff that did not work. When I talk about things that do work, I probably seem completely fine, but. Okay, last elf thing of this video, I promise. The lengthening and defining mascara. When I was trying like dirt cheap elf stuff, I was going nuts. I ran into a lot of great things and I thought this lengthening and defining mascara, I was pretty sure I'd tried it many years ago and I thought I'd give it another go. Um, not good. D don't, just don't even waste your time with this one. Like, it, the brush spirals around. It's kind of a wide spiral. Um, the formula is not super wet. Um, it's kind of like a thick, creamy formula. And that, paired with this kind of spread out bristle brush, it really clumped my lashes together a lot, and that was about the only thing it did a lot of, because it didn't build up a lot of length, it didn't, you know, do a lot of great separating and this and that. It just 
did a very effective job of clumping my lashes together, which is obviously not what I want a mascara to do. Let's talk about Jouer for a second here. They've got um, these like liquid, or I think they're called lip creams, and they've got a lot of beautiful matte shades. The one, actually I'm wearing one of them today, the matte shade in Dulce de Leche. So it's a pretty like kind of soft blush type nude color, really gorgeous. I've tried several other shades from bright to absolutely nude that I think are really pretty. And as far as a matte liquid lip color formula, they're not all that uncomfortable. I mean, they are dry as you would expect a matte to be, but they feel decent. Well, in the same line, they've got metallic ones and the metallics look god awful. Like, I mean, they just, and they're sold out. They're sold out on their website. So people own these and people are wearing them. And I mean, maybe, maybe it's a mix it in type thing with some other lip color, like kind of highlight the lower center of the lip area. That might be good, but all over the lips, worn full on. Like I looked at the way the lips on the website looked and they didn't look too bad, but on my lips, these really don't look good. And these were sent to me, so I didn't choose these, but the shades I'm calling out are Papaye Pamplemousse, Pample, Pamplemousse, Citronade Rose, and Praline. And Praline would be the deepest, so that might be the one that I would think could be the most workable, but just to show you like a picture, a few hours after application, it looks so bad. It doesn't look good right after application first off, but give it a little time and the lips become even more dry. And I think it's the fact that these are a formula that does kind of dry down on your lips and then these are totally metallic. Like I just don't, I don't like that look. So these lightest ones are even bigger offenders in my book. But I gotta say the brand's got a beautiful thing going on with the matte finishes. So if you are, you know, planning to order some of these in the future, look into the mattes. Just make sure what finish you're getting. Last thing here is just more of a cry for help or a what's going on with this. Can somebody explain this to me? The Stila Illuminating Powder Foundation Compact. Okay, I got this. I was just nosing around in Ulta a couple weeks ago and I was swatching things and I saw the pans of this product here. I got it in the shade 40 watts and I was touching these and I thought, oh, that is like the smoothest, most creamy feeling powder ever. It does feel great. It's soft. It actually has nice coverage to it, but I don't get the packaging whatsoever. First off, you've got to buy a pan and then you've got to buy the separate compact. Okay, fine. We'll do it. Can you see the little square of sticky right there? It actually had something that you peel off that would make you think it will stick into your compacted product. And I think it said 3M on there. Like some of them Stila just went into Staples and said, hey, we need some double-sided sticky for these. I put it in, it does not stick. It just, it's not even touching anything. Like there's a little rim right in there. I think that's what's keeping that sticky from actually adhering to anything. So you've got pan of product in there, no sticky, and then the puff that I think came with the pan. You put this in here and it won't actually like close down on top of it. The puff keeps the pan up, it's too big. Like you know that's supposed to be shutting. So I go ahead and I like press it down and it will close, but you know that's putting stress on this hinge and it's probably going to like snap on me one fine day. But why is that so weird? Does anybody have this compact and it actually worked? Or is, did I buy the wrong thing? Actually the back says illuminating powder foundation compact. This says illuminating powder foundation refill. That's it everyone. I hope I have a lot easier time uploading this video than the last one I put up because that was like a whole day of frustration. <laughs> so maybe that's a little bit of what I'm taking out on this video. But like I said, some things work, some things don't. There's a ton of makeup on the market. It's not all gonna work perfectly for anybody. So I'm just sharing my experiences with you. Feel free to vent about your own experiences in the comments section and I will see you in the next video. Probably in a much more cheerful mood. Bye.